What's going on YouTube? It's your girl V the Notary. Hope you guys are having a great day. So this video is for all of my peoples, all of my followers in the community um, and future followers who are interested in working for the federal government, don't know where to start. And I'm doing this video specifically because I've done several videos. You guys all know that I work for the federal government and a lot of you have expressed how do you get started? And specifically, you know, for those of you who have never worked for the federal government or, are, you know, kind of looking to just get in and kind of get started. Some of you have specifically asked about entry level positions within the federal government, um, you know, to kind of get started in your career. Obviously, you will, if you start entry level, your goal is to progress, which is another great thing about working for the federal government because usually um depending on the job series and everything every year you're going to get a nice raise your grade you know will probably increase especially in your first few years so you could start out making one you know at one place and then four or five years you'll be you know making six figures so that's the great thing about the federal government okay so again this is near and dear to my heart because as a federal employee i started in this specific career field, okay? Um, I was a, you know, undergrad economics major. This has absolutely nothing to do with economics. However, you know how it goes. A lot of times the things that you may major in, you end up doing something totally different. And I have no regrets. I'm happy about, you know, where my career has taken me. And I'm very grateful because it's allowed me to have, you know, that work-life balance that I always talk about and just have other opportunities. And I've been able to grow immensely within the government. So what job am I talking about? I am talking about a contract specialist, okay? So entry level, well, let me just explain to you how things are as you're paid in, in, in reference to being paid in the federal government. So the federal government has something called a grade level. So anywhere from grade one to 15, obviously grade one being on the lower end, you know, and grade 15, you know, being the highest grade that you can get to. Okay. And then within each grade, there's different steps. And obviously the higher your step, the more you make. So you could be, you know, a grade seven, step six, step eight, step 10, you know what I mean? So um, normally entry level in the federal government is a grade five or seven or nine. So five, seven or nine. Um, and then, you know, it's going to all depend on where you live. So there's, you know, things, something called cost of living. For example, if you live in New York, because the cost of living is higher as a grade seven, you're going to make more than a grade seven that lives in Atlanta or Missouri, you know what I mean? Um, so that all you just got to kind of take that into consideration when you are looking for jobs, right? So again, entry level in the federal government is usually a five, seven or nine in like the professional grade series. If you're like a secretary or something and there's nothing wrong with secretaries, we all need them. Some of them can tend to be start at lower grades like the, the threes and the fours but normally entry level is five to nine okay so there's also something called a series now the series is usually a three to four digit number and your series represents the type of occupation that you're in so if you are an accountant they have a series OK, if you are a chemist, they have a separate series. If you are an attorney, they have a series. OK, so, for example, for a contract specialist or contracting officer, it's the same series. That series is an 1102. So when you are searching for jobs, you're going to search for, you know, you know, go to USA Jobs. Um, remember, you need to create an account and you're going to search for jobs that um, or in your area. So if you live in Maryland or Florida, you're going to put, you know, Florida and then you're going to search that series and then you can even drill down by agency. I don't suggest doing that. That way you could just put the series in there and then all the different agencies in your area that have that particular job occupation will come up in your search. Okay. So 
that I just wanted to give you guys a little background about how the pay scales work, how the occupational series work, you know, just so you have a, just a, you know, fundamental understanding a little bit of, you know, how to search for things and how the government, how the federal jobs are set up. Okay. So we talked about that. Now, let me talk to you guys about why the 1102 series contract specialist series is so so amazing um such a great um occupation and place to start um and how it you know it allowed me to really grow and do different things and you know now i'm you know a program manager you know focusing on small business you know and enhancing small business contracting right but um 1102 is a great place to start so what is a contract specialist really quickly a contract specialist or a contracting officer well contracting officer actually has the signing authority okay so the contract specialist is um almost the same thing as a contracting officer but a lot of times as a contract specialist you're doing the brunt work and then the contracting officer will sign off on the official contract right but what they what you do as a contract specialist you are the authority within your agency that is the buying agent so we talk all the time about contracts you know i guys i talked to you guys about you know small business contracts how to get into contracting every agency buys things right if you work at the department of transportation they buy products and services so as the contract specialist or the 1102 you are the professional who assists in the flow of whatever the contract process from cradle to grave right regardless of the types of contracts we're not gonna get into that but you are the individual who administers the contract from you know the solicitation process which is like the beginning when you're looking for for contract um for companies all the way up to contract award so number one reason why it's such a good good series every single agency and i mean every single one needs contract specialists and contracting officers because every single agency buys things every single one from sec the financial agencies irs treasury every agency is buying things so every agency needs 1102s okay the second reason is because 1102s are usually in high demand um a lot of times 1102s because there's such a high demand for them they move around a lot like that's one series where if you want to explore different agencies you can easily go to let's just say you're not having the best experience at the census bureau and you want to try noah you know you can easily kind of move around so that's another reason why it's really a great area to go into and the last reason which is probably the most important normally contract specialists have a career ladder which means like let's just say you start as a seven you know the first year you're a seven then the next year usually goes to a nine then to an 11 then to a 12 then to a 13 and sometimes to a 14 so i feel like that 1102 series advances much quicker than a lot of other series within you know the federal government um and each agency varies, you know, um, on, you know, how that career ladder, you know, kind of, you know, it just depends on the agency. Some agencies, um, you might, you know, you might want to go to an agency where maybe the job goes up to a 13, some stop at a 12, some go to a 14, you know, some have opportunities for you to be supervisory and go up to a 15. Um, but there are so many opportunities throughout the entire federal government all over the country for 1102 series. Now, what are the requirements? Really quickly, um, some positions, depending on your grade, you will need a college degree. Um, I think a, a, a while ago for an 1102, 1102, you had to have at least, at least a bachelor's. I don't think that's the case anymore. Don't quote me, but I don't believe that you have to have um, a college degree as of now to be an 1102. I think it depends on the agency and the type of work that they're doing. So that's another good thing. You know, you don't necessarily have to have a degree 
in order to get a great, secure federal job that, you know, will um, have the potential to really advance you to the next level. OK, so um, that is, again, you know, in a nutshell, you know, I have a lot of experience talking about this particular area. Um, in occupation. So I could probably answer any question that you guys have. I'm not in 1102 anymore. But when I came into the government, I came in under a f federal career intern program where they they um, hired college graduates and kind of, you know, um, work with them and help them to advance. So that is how I started in the government. And, um, you know, again, I'm no longer in 1102, but I was for a long time and it really allowed me to get experience and learn about the contracting process, learn about the acquisition policy process, learn about small business contracting, and it's just made me really, really well-rounded. So I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of this area um, and let you know that if you are looking for entry level or even if you let's just say you are not looking for entry level you have contracting experience maybe you are doing contracting work in the private sector and you want to switch over to the public sector which is the federal government um you can do that as well and you don't have to necessarily come in you know at the lower grades you could come in at the higher grades but you know i just want you guys to know that this is a great you know, opportunities specifically because you guys asked about entry level opportunities within the government. So I hope that this um, interests you and helped you guys. And if you have any questions about the 1102 series, please drop down in my comments because I'm pretty sure that I can answer them. I have a wealth of knowledge in that particular area. Okay. And if you guys like videos like this, you want to learn more about, you know, um, the federal government, the hiring process, you know, contracting process, please let me know. Um, I'm always trying to get a feel for like, do they want to hear more notary videos? Do they want to know more about the government? You know, um, I'm never sure. So your feedback is really important to me, you guys. Okay. So as always, like, subscribe and share and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.